Okay, so check this out. This is a pretty tough proof, so bear with me here. So quadrilla A, B, C, D with diagonals A, C, and B, D bisect each other. We know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. So those are givens. Then it tells us to prove two things. We want to prove that a triangle A, C, D, this triangle right here, is an isosceles. And we want to prove triangle A, E, B, which is right over here, is a right triangle. Let's take care of this one step at a time. So we're going to start with the isosceles triangle proof. Now, I'm just going to mark and show you how we're going to do this. To prove that this is an isosceles, check out how we're going to do this. First thing is this. One of our givens is that A, C, and B, D bisect each other. Those are your diagonals. Now, if we know that the diagonals bisect each other, this actually tells us this, that A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. That's why this is here. It's indirectly telling us that it's a parallelogram. So I know the opposite sides are parallel. So I could state the opposite. Let's just mark that the opposite sides are parallel. Now, if the opposite sides are parallel, then I know alternate interior angles are congruent. So I know that this angle right here, angle 1, is going to be congruent to angle DCA. So I could put angle 1 here. Now, that's basically how you prove that this is an isosceles. Because look here. Because I know that 1 and 2 are congruent, that's another given, this must be an isosceles because the base angles are congruent. So that's basically the strategy that I'm going to use to write this proof. All right? So check it out. So we're going to write down our statements and reasons. Okay? Now, my first statement is the given. So AC and BD bisect each other. That's one a given. And then I know two angle one is congruent to angle two. That's also a given. All right. Now, remember, my third step was to state this. A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Now, how did I know that? I knew that because, remember, the reason I knew that statement, that it was a parallelogram, was because... Well, this first given, that diagonals bisect each other in a parallelogram. So that proves that's a parallelogram because it has a parallelogram property. Okay? Now that I've proven it's a parallelogram, I'm going to start using my alternate interior angles. But just like the proof we did before, first we're going to state this. We know that AB is parallel to CD, and let's just keep at it. We'll do AD is parallel to BC. And the reason I know that is because opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. Now I can use alternate interior angles. So check this out. I'm going to say that angle 5 Angle DCA is congruent to angle 1. All right? And that's because of alternate interior angles. All right? So DCA is right here, and this is angle 1. So I'm just stating that those two are congruent. Now I can state this. And this is probably something a little new to you. I'm going to say that angle... DCA is congruent to angle 2, right? So angle DCA and 2 are congruent. And the reason I know that, and this is going to be new, um, is because of substitution. All right, I just substituted DCA in for angle 1. Remember it said angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Now I just know that DCA is congruent to angle 2. So now I can make my conclusion, triangle uh, what triangle is this? ACD is isosceles, and that's because base angles are congruent. Now, check it out. Now, we're going to continue our proof over here, and we're going to do the second part. We're going to prove AEB is a right triangle. Now, the way we're going to do that is we're going to say this. Because ACD is a... Um, 
what's it called? A isosceles triangle, I know that these two sides are congruent. If the consecutive sides of a parallelogram are congruent, you know it's a rhombus, right? Because that means all sides are congruent. So if I know that this is a rhombus, check it out. So first I say it's an isosceles triangle. That proves it's a rhombus. If this is a rhombus, then I can just state this, that diagonals are perpendicular. And if diagonals are perpendicular, well, then I know this must be a right triangle over here. Woo! Tough proof, right? So let's do this together. So we're going to continue. We left off at 7. We're going to say 8. Uh, here we go. So, 8 is AD is congruent to CD. We know that because um, two sides of isosceles triangle are congruent, 9 a, B, C, D is a rhombus. How did I know that? All sides are congruent. 10, I know that A, C is perpendicular to B, D. That's because diagonals are perpendicular in a rhombus. 11, angle A, E, B is a right angle. That's the definition of perpendicular lines. And then 12, finally, I can finally state that A, B, E is a right triangle. So triangle A, What's that say? AEB is a right triangle. That's def of right triangles. Oh, that was a hell of a proof, right? Well, that'll get you six points. Remember, if you put some correct statements, you will get points on this. This is the full perfect proof that you need to write. A water glass can be modeled by a truncated right cone, a cone with, which is cut parallel to the base, as shown below. So let's be clear here. Truncated means cut off, okay? If you didn't know that. That just means to truncate something is to cut off. So basically you're taking this cone and you're cutting off this part to get the water glass, as shown here. All right? The diameter at the top of the glass is 3 inches, so that we know this is 3 inches. And the diameter at the bottom of the glass is 2 inches, so we know this is 2 inches. The height of the glass is 5 inches. Cool. The base of the diameter of 2 inches must be parallel with the base of the diameter of 3 inches in order to find out the, the, the height of the cone. Explain why. So let's be clear here. It's telling you that these two bases are parallel. And these two need to be parallel to find this full height. Why is that true? Well, I'll tell you this. We might have talked about this in class the other day. Um, but these need to be parallel so you can have similar triangles. right? You have a smaller triangle here. So by having these parallel, you have similar triangles. So that creates a small triangle, and you have a big triangle that are similar to each other. Remember, these are parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. So that's why that has to be parallel to find the full height of the cone. Because of similar triangles, you can then use all this information to solve for it. So they have to be parallel. Parallel. Because it creates similar triangles. And with the similar triangles, we could set up our proportions. Okay? So let's move on to the next part of this question. All right? Now, determine the state inches the height of the larger cone. All right? So let's actually show our two triangles. So we have triangle one, that's the small triangle, and two home in triangle two, which is the bigger triangle. Now we're gonna fill in the information we know. So what we know in our big triangle, we know that this is three, right? That's the top of the diameter. 
And we know that this whole height is going to be 5. That was like up to here, right? Plus x. That's the rest of the height. Now in our other triangle, we have 2, right? That's the bottom of our um, glass. And our height here is x as well. Now we just have to set up our proportion, right? These are our similar triangles. We know 3 is to 2 as x plus 5, I just added these together, is 2x. Now we cross multiply this and we get 3x is equal to 2x plus 5. And we get 3x is equal to 2x plus 10. Subtract 2x from both sides. And we know x is equal to 10. So we want to find the height of the larger cone. The height is, now if x is 10, the whole thing is going to be 15 inches. Notice how we put our units here. Now the last part of this is determine the state the nearest tenths of a cubic inch, the volume of the water glass. So what we're going to be doing is actually doing a subtraction problem here. So you have your big cone here, right? And we figured out that the whole height is 15 and this diameter is 3. And what we're going to do is find this whole volume. So the first volume is going to be 1 third pi r squared times height. That's the whole volume. And then we're going to truncate or cut off our smaller volume, which is, remember, this diameter is 2. And this height right here, we found it to be 10. So we're going to cut out this part of it. Well, I guess maybe we should, yeah, we should cut out this part. And that'll give us the remainder is what the volume of the glass is, because this part is just what our glass is. So we're taking the big cone, we're subtracting out the small cone. So we're going to be doing it twice. The volume is equal to 1 third pi r squared times height. And this is probably the easiest part here. We just have to fill in all our information. So volume is equal to 1 third pi. Our radius here is 1.5 times our height is 15. Don't forget your squared. Volume is equal to 1 third pi, our radius in this one is 1, times the height of 10. All right, now we're going to put these in our calculator and write out every number that we see. Okay, so hold on, I'm just putting in my calculator as the whale. Give me one thinking. Um, and what I get here is um, 35.343. All right, and for here, I get 10.472. All right, and what I'm going to do here is just subtract these guys, right, because I'm cutting out the small one, and I get the volume of the glass is 24.9, and I'm cutting it off there because it says to the nearest tenth of a cubic inch, inches cubed. All right, and that is how you solve that problem. You're welcome. All right, that's it for this video. This is Issa!